Hello and welcome to our EBT Works, where we discuss anything and everything having to do with our EBT. I'm Dr. Steve Johnson, and today's topic is overcoming low motivation. And let's begin with some kinds of phrases that we often hear about motivation, things like, I need to get myself motivated, or, you know, she doesn't even seem motivated to do the job, or COVID made me lose all motivation, or come back to me when you are motivated to change yourself, change your behavior. What we do know that motivation is not, is that motivation is not a thing that you either possess once and for all, or you don't have. We also know that motivation is not a stable person uh, personality trait, that I either have good motivation or I lack motivation because that's a characteristic of me as an individual. What we do know about motivation is that it is complicated and it involves forces both inside a person and outside the person in the environment. Motivation shows up in our behavior. That is what we do. And that's no surprise because the origin of the word motivation is from the Latin word meaning to move. One way to look at motivation that I find tremendously helpful is motivation as behavior with a purpose. It is the why of what we do. This takes place in the now, but it is directed toward the future, toward a desired goal that we imagine or we plan to achieve. So first thing we know is about getting motivation is get a goal. You have to have a desired goal. And the clearer the goal and the degree to which you uh, desire it will help determine your motivation or lack thereof. I think a, an important question to ask yourself is, what is my goal? What do I want to uh, reach in that goal? Why do I want to reach that goal? A lot of people think that they are doomed to feeling stuck, totally unable to get something done, to actually get back a lost motivation. First, there really is no such thing as being doomed to being stuck. You can do something when you don't feel motivated to try to get that motivation back. What can you do? Well, let's look at several things that you can do. And one that is really important is to think about a purpose, a goal, and why you want to reach that goal. The why is very important. It is best if it is linked to something that you value, something that you value strongly. For example, creating a stable home life for your family or making enough money to retire and live um, without struggling or to make the world around you fairer for all people or to have close friends that you love. Define your goal and think about what value you hope goal will bring about. Such things as simplicity or justice or stability, love, popularity, whatever. Move on your goals. And let's look at that uh, in uh, a little more detail. We can divide goals in uh, many different ways. And one way to do that is to look at two types of goals, intrinsic or extrinsic. An extrinsic goal is something that we want for external reward, such as uh, working for money. It's not that we love money intrinsically, but money helps us reach another goal, another value. The working for money or having that money is an extrinsic reward. Whereas an intrinsic reward or goal is one that we want for its own sake. Maybe supporting my family. Maybe that's why I'm working for money. Working for money may be my extrinsic goal, but being able to support my family is an intrinsic goal, one that I want just for itself. Other ways to look at goals, and we can divide them into what we call approach goals or avoidance goals. An approach goal is one in which we want to attain something, such as my goal is to get an A on the final exam. An avoidance goal is one in which we're trying to avoid something rather than try to attain something. An example of an avoidance goal would be avoiding getting anxious when I get up to speak in front of people. Approach goals tend to be much better than avoidance goals. And the reason is that avoidance goals 
can be kind of complicated because to try to avoid getting, for example, getting anxious when I get up and speak in front of people, I have to think of all the ways that I could become anxious about that. And then I have to have a way to address all of those ways. Whereas with an approach goal, all I have to do is find one way to attain that goal. And so it's not as complicated. It doesn't mean that attaining that goal will necessarily be easy, but it, they tend to be easier than avoidance goals because avoidance goals are so complicated. So it's not surprising that many people with anxiety and depression often have more avoidance goals than approach goals. Another way that we can classify those is to talk about, you know, thoughtful goals versus impulsive goals. And of course, it's much better to be more thoughtful about a goal, plan for it, brainstorm about ways to attain it, etc., rather than impulse uh, goal, impulsive goals, because impulsive goals can be done without much thought at all. And as a result, we can actually create more problems and impediments toward reaching our uh, goal. I think one important question when we're looking at this is, how are you going to obtain the goal? How ready are you to obtain the goal? If you aren't very ready, then it might be helpful for you to focus or make a list on the good reasons to act to achieve the goal whether you feel ready or you don't feel ready. In fact, sometimes just acting upon the goal, thoughtfully acting upon the goal can uh, be better than certainly waiting until you feel ready because it may take a long time for you to feel ready. So once you've thought about the goal and you plan for the goal, then rather than thinking that it has, you have to be absolutely certain and ready, don't wait begin to act into the goal rather than wait. So we, in REBT, we say sometimes it's easier to act your way into a goal than to feel your way into that goal. Before moving into ways we can, you know, that we tend to sap our motivation, let's uh, make some important points about motivation there and, and then move on. One, there is no single factor that helps us get motivated. Motivation is multifactorial. And an internal source of motivation may not be enough. For example, having the right belief, having good values, having the right intentionality, knowing this does not always result in doing. So it takes more than knowing what the goal is and planning for the goal. We need to act. We need for that the knowing to result in uh, performance, performative knowing, or actually doing something. The other thing to remember is that motivation is not like an on-off switch. We either have motivation or we don't feel any motivation. Motivation actually is on a continuum. There are degrees of motivation. And so I think one of the questions that we can, uh, some of the questions that we can ask ourselves tap into that realization that motivation occurs on a continuum. And one of the ways that we can put that on a continuum is asking questions about how ready you are to change, how ready you are, what's your level of motivation so that you can begin to move toward a goal. I think at the lowest level of motivation, we may ask ourselves, do I think it would really be better if I changed and acted toward that goal? If your answer is no, then it might be good to look at the beliefs that you have, of why you think you're not ready to change and whatever those are to help overcome those goals. A degree of more motivation is to ask yourself, am I at least ambivalent about changing? Why do I think uh, that there are pros and cons about changing? What are those pros and cons? And then uh, be ready to come up with reasons for the uh, moving toward that goal. A third one might be a, a, a more motivated to change might be, 
Am I now prepared to take steps to change? So I've moved over past the ambivalence and I'm saying, okay, am I ready to do it? Am I ready to actually act on something? If not, why not? And look at the beliefs that you have that are preventing you from taking action upon a goal that you want. Next level would be, do I have a plan to change and attain the goal and act on that and revising the goal and the plan if in acting upon the goal, I bump into some things that need to be solved. So do I have a plan to change and attain the goal? Am I acting on it? And do I revise as needed to help maximize the possibility that I'm going to attain that goal? And then I think another level of motivation that's even higher level of motivation is has my plan moved beyond just being a plan, but now I have made it a part of my entire life. It's built into me. I have a um, behavioral repertoire that's built into my daily behavior. And then finally, have I attained my goal to a helpful level or is there more that I want to do? Looking at each of these levels or readiness to change and how we can move toward greater motivation to move toward the attainment of that goal that we have identified as helpful for us is really going to be an important, uh, important process. And as you do that, be honest about your answer and take steps to move you to the next step, next level of greater motivation. And remember, it's a process. And as a process, it, uh, it often takes some time. So be kind to yourself and allow yourself some time to move through this process of increasing your motivation. Finally, there's one clear way that if you do it, you will sabotage reaching your goal. It'll lead to demotivating yourself. And that is what you need to do is watch your self-talk. Some of your self-talk, the talk that goes on in your head, can sap you of motivation. Certain kinds of thoughts sabotage us rather than support us and be motivated to attain our desired life goals in light of our values. Let me give some examples of those thoughts that are just not helpful. I must be certain that I will attain my goal before I even act. Or it would be horrible if I spent a lot of time working to attain a goal, but then I failed to attain it. Or I can't stand the amount of work it's going to take to reach my desired goal. Or I'm too weak to do this. I'm just too weak to attain the goal. Or nothing wrong with me, but people are just uncaring and unwilling to help me reach my goal. Or the world is so messed up. What's the use of even, try, even trying to reach a goal? So you can see all of those are irrational, unhelpful beliefs. They're normal and they're pretty common, but they're, they're, they sabotage us in being motivated to attain our goals in light of our values. So we might replace those with more helpful beliefs. Let me give an example of a replacement of the ones that I just listed. It would be nice to know in advance, you know, working uh, to attain a goal, whether I would attain it, but you know, it's not necessary. It certainly would be nice, but it's not necessary. Or I might not like the amount of work that will go into attaining the goal that I desire, but it isn't terrible. That amount of work isn't terrible. It's not horrible. It's not the end of Western civilization. Or I don't like the amount of work needed to attain the, my desired goal, but I can stand it. I mean, I'm not going to fall dead. Or there may be times when I lack energy, but that doesn't prevent me from working as much as I can to attain the goal. I may not do maximally work, maximal work in doing that, but whatever energy level I have, I can use that to move toward goal attainment. Another one would, it would be nice if people helped me attain my desired goal, but if they don't, it doesn't mean make them uncaring people. Maybe they're focusing on their own goals. Maybe they're just, they're going with through a lot right now, right? And I just haven't come on their radar screen yet. All kinds of reasons there. Or, and finally, the world does have some major challenges in it. And we all know that it does right now, especially. 
but that doesn't mean that the world is totally messed up. There are some good points in this world. So we see part of what we can do to help us get and maintain motivation is to be very careful about our self-talk. And any time that we're moving toward things that will sabotage us, to change the way that we're thinking such that the way we're thinking helps us attain goals rather than sabotages us from reaching those goals. So I thank you very much. I hope some of this has been helpful. We've looked at ways to increase our motivation to attain desired life goals that are grounded in values that are important to uh, each of us. Thank you and have a great day.